Let's talk about PLC test rigs. Been a while. Start releasing on YouTube. Now I need to keep up because I've been assured. If I don't finish this job, someone's going to kill me. PLC test rig time. If I don't finish this video, people will kill me. Yeah? This took a bit of a back burner. It took me ages to edit the first two parts, but it's going back again. So, in the last episode, I acquired this little cheap, nasty PLC off of AliExpress that we think works with the Mitsubishi software, but we need to prove that. I also acquired a cheap, shonky, nasty, horrible HDMI for it, and all the other stuff in the last video which is in here. It's all in here waiting to have something done with it. But first, what we'll do is we'll just power them up just get them to work on the bench, yeah? Just lie on the bench with, with cables everywhere. Like that piece of shit test rig that fucking... Um, does, 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 So anyhow, we need to look at how this works for you, not for me. So we need to put the things that you buy. You don't have to buy these ones. You buy what you want to buy, yeah? So let's look at the most basic form is this and this. We'll go together and make a test rig. So we could look at that. So we'll leave those on the desk, yeah? But we might want to incorporate this and other things. But let's look at some of my other test rigs. Just to see what options we've got because it's for you. It's for you to build so you can use it how you want it. I've got a couple of tests that I'm really happy with that came out really well. I'm going to show you them, give you some sort of inspiration because all we've seen so far is them shitty pictures I've seen on eBay, which actually where that shit is quite good. So let's look at some test rigs I've made and how they function and work. If you've seen the other side, the old side of this office is a test rig, yeah. There's some stuff that's just there to look nice, but there's a lot of stuff on these shelves, those ones there and those ones there that are there for tinkering and playing with. Like your Wild fuse box, that, they're just for show, legacy equipment. But other things are test rigs. I'm going to take you around a few of the shelves, just show you how I display and use stuff for when I'm teaching and training, because that's what you're going to be doing. And we'll talk about different options. I'm going to show you one of my excellent test rigs that I really like that came out how I wanted it. On this side, there's not much going off. A lot of stuff in there is just for display and things. But I've got some instruments here. Look, a little collection of 0 to 10 volt, 4 to 20 amp instruments. Now, I want to be able to incorporate these instruments. For example, this one is a vacuum gauge. I think it's 4 to 20 milliamp, 4 wire. This can be incorporated to my test rig using the an M12 connector and the power supply on the rig and the milliamps. It'll read on there and you can just attach a syringe to that and vacuum it. So there's that. That's the vacuum gauge. That's a pressure gauge. That's a pressure gauge. And that's a, also a vacuum gauge. And I've got a few other milliamp instruments, but I want to be able to incorporate them. So I'm going to need to provide terminals on my test rig. Maybe we should put that on some sort of list. So... external analog ins and outs i want the plc on it a hmi on it and we'll come back to that i have a fine array of shitty contacts and things that i can control and relays again do i want them on my test rig that is a weighty display case that is it's got a lot of contacts on so maybe i'll just operate little relays and stuff or contacts that are external maybe again i'll provide terminals for that I want external digital inputs and outputs for operating stuff like that. That about covers that shelf. At the moment, this shelf here, which should be a display case when people come in, uh, it's got projects on that have been ongoing. There's a meter job. It's got lingering of the meter job. And this is where all the projects that are happening on YouTube come to die. So at the minute, we've got the PLC one. Look, there's a bit of a meter one going off. So there's nothing on there. That's interesting. However, over here, I do again have instruments that I can incorporate, meters that I want to use, drives and things that can connect to it. I've got application uh, process control, uh, process control, calibrators, meters and all that. So I want to be able to pump all this stuff into it and use it. Now, here's a very simple test rig I made. And we'll look at this one first. This is just a float test rig, but it's been developed a little bit. And hopefully Frenchie won't see this and remember I've got this to and try and get it back. This is one of the first test rigs I made, yeah? It's just some floats. So you've got on, 
on and off and off and the terminal's all here it's that simple then because french's lumps of that news yet it's got a vega distance probe here which i'm still messing around with because to make a video on that thing is taking forever the good thing about this rig is it can connect to any of the other rigs you're about to see so you can use these normally open normally closed and common terminals in these to connect to other rigs and i quite like this idea i like the idea of not having one big huge test rig that i have to carry around that's just that i like the idea of these modular rigs where well basically i could have my plc screwed to a little bit of wood with my hmi and nothing else except load terminals maybe a power supply and i could just put it on here and i could connect it to this and make these operate my plc then i can add say a contactor external and a bit of wood which i've actually got down here there's the one i was after lot i've got a, a a breaker an overload and a contact on there i like the idea of these little plates i call them and that when i'm training because i train people and the light weight and needs to adjust and then what i do is if i want to do a motor control plate which is this one this one control motor and get my plc plate and then i've got my little um what the fuck is this called I've got my little pump floats plate here. And I like the idea that I can just get these little plates and go, right, make that, control that, and mingle them all in. So that's the way I'm going to build mine. Maybe you want to build a massive fucking huge box, piece of wood as big as that, and have all your gear on it. But I want mine to be manageable little plates where I can incorporate them together. Bit like my car style. So that's the tact I'm going to go for. So that's what I want to think about how you want to design your rig. Where is it going to live? How are you going to store it like? If it's on a little plate, you can store it in a box. If it's on a big piece of wood, you've got to store it like a fucking train set, like behind your bed or something. So I'm going to make a plate that holds my PLC and anything that's associated with it on a DIN rail. And I'm probably going to make a plate that holds this I.O. card simulator. What you have to be aware of here is, these are cheap, but they are expensive you have to keep replacing them. These have got little shitty terminals on as is this. So all of my, all of these parts are going to go to terminals on my rigs. Terminals, little DIN rail terminals, Wait there, I'll show you. These are terminals. These are what I'm going to use. I'm going to use this brand. These are entry -like. These are very, very expensive, yeah? Just buy the cheap ones of AliExpress. I'm only using these because these are my company standard and I don't want loads of shit ones knocking around, yeah? So I use these. But I wire out of my shitty little terminals on my test rig into my terminal. That'll be used once, one at each end. Then I'll use all the screwing I do, I'll do in here and all the fucking I do in here. That way, if I wreck a screw terminal... I can just take this out and change it for another one. Whereas if I wreck a screw turn on here, it's going to be fucked. So I'm about making the wear and tear on my rig as low as I can. So that's how I'm going to hit it. That's where I'm going to do it, yeah? But just to wrap this video up, I'm going to show you some other test rigs I've made. And what you'll see is, and I'm going to do a little design for this, because you'll see that I can incorporate these test rigs with this test rig. And that's why I'm doing this modular plate system. And in the next video, I'm going to start connecting some of this, this, and this to see if they actually fucking work. I'm just going to show around some of my test rigs. I'm also going to put this video out on YouTube um, to get some feedback before I start ever thinking about it. Let me show you some of the rigs I've got. And I've done them, just to give you some ideas. There's a motor rig. That is simply a motor strapped to a piece of wood. Yeah. And so that you don't wreck the top terminals, there's a set of terminals provided down here for the phases to go into because this is about a £400 motor. These are expensive. But if you're just connecting to it and you fuck the terminal... That's great. So you can see how I've got rid of damaging the terminals in here by providing a SAR. I know you're thinking that, you're probably thinking, what if you want to practice repairing a motor or mega a motor out and all that kind of stuff? Well, what I do is I made these test rigs here. These simulate motors. And you can put faults on these switches and you can fuck this up and it won't fuck the entire motor up. So I've got two of those. Look, they're just a test rig I made. These white cables are to simulate the motor cable. So you've got to undo it, put all the bits to one side and put it on. So there you go. That's a sectional motor, a motor you can take apart. And look at the insides of this one is the challenge this is a star delta test rig you get to wire a star delta but obviously it would get really really expensive if people kept wrecking my contact so what i did was i wired all the terminals down here and you get the cables and you connect them together with wagos which meant that people aren't unscrewing materials all the time you've still got a wire from that one there to that one there but you do it via a link so that was a very clever way i thought of coming up with a way of not wrecking really expensive contacts all the time and getting people to do a star delta. You get a green light for power, the star con a star delta, a star and a delta a star and a delta light there, and it takes an external pass pulse to them. So yeah, there's a star delta one I made. 
earlier. So that's the start out one I've got. These are some timer rigs I made. All you do is you've got a you've got a normal open, normally closed lamp. You've got a timer with these multi functions, and you've got some outputs. You put the power in on the ones with the white dots. You have a normally open, normally closed in the common, and you have B1, which is the activate it, so you can use external push buttons and things like that. That is used conduction with. There's another one down there. Look, there's another timer relay there. There's a dull one. There's all the motor starting ones, which are these ones. Look, these little plates. They've got all the motor things you need on. You just contact to your auxiliary, your cutter, and your auxiliary block. But then my favourite ones are these ones here. I'll drag one out. These with all my motor videos. I'll pull one out to show you. These are the ones I use on my motor course. You've got an overload with an auxiliary, a contactor, a relay, another relay. Normally 24 contactor. Everyone's got a start, stop, e-stop, buzzer, white light, green light, orange light, red light, selector switch. They all are wired down to these cables here, which have got labels on. That saves I don't have to wire up light switches. I don't need to teach people how to wire up light switches. Then what I ask is that people connect these lightly up into these terminals. These are what you train on when you've done some fucking around. So this has been a very successful test trick for me and it really works in the environment. I use it from... Also, you can then connect to the external plate, connect it to the external PLC and do all that. So that's just a few test tricks I've done. This design's been really good. The length of it is really good. It all works. The problem is it's a real nightmare to carry around and store. So I'll probably look at doing that a bit differently. But they've been good. And they also come with... This particular rig comes with these, a box of ancillaries. In the ancillaries box, each one of these boards is one of these boxes. You've got a power cable for getting the power from the main uh, power supply, which is normally a 24 volt power supply. In fact, it's that one there. Then you've got a little distribution block for your power there. And then you get a yellow button with a normally normally close, so you can do inching. You can wire them up for inching. Then you get a selector. Then you get a light, a lamp contactor blocks waggos and all your linky cables to make it work and all that and some other little bits and bobs so that's how i do my test because that's how i want to do my pet i want my test rig for my plc to mimic this kind of setup and i actually bought some of these to add to these to give me more leds in the future but what i think i want to do is for the start of my test for real next size because i like the modular system because it enables you to get something working out of these basic parts the plc the io test card and the hmi I think that's what I want on my first rig. I want my PLC rig, my simulator, and my HMI on the rig that work and talk to each other. Then everything else, if I want to get rid of this and use this, I can. But it will all be a standalone system ready to go. Also, I can just as easily swap this PLC out for something like that one there, look. So you could just as easily use a smart rig like this to do this job. And have the same kind of programming. And also... I'd quite like to build one of these smart relays in to one of those as well. Unfortunately, I've got these in 24 volts, so I can't do that at the minute. I really should sell those um, 100 to 240 volt ones I've got, AC or DC, and buy 24 volt ones on eBay. But yeah, if you're going to buy anything, just remember, just use 24 volt. It's always going to be safe on the bench. Although it was, they were free because it was out of skip, they're 100 volts, 240. So I've got to use 110 with them, really. I've got to get a transformer. I've got a fuck around by 110 volt lamps. No, it's not happening. I'm going to try and flog those and get some 24 volt ones. In fact, I'll, I'm going to sell them and get a Siemens logo and another Schneider one. Uh, in fact, I think someone's actually offered me some of those, so I might go and see that guy. Old Eddie's offered me some, so yeah, so you get them swapped out. So I want 24 volt because it's just safer. Please don't go fucking around with crazy voltages like I do in my garage because it's ridiculous. So yeah, let's think about this design. Just throwing it out there, I think I'd like it to be like that. I'd like my PLC... And my thing to be like that at the back. So I can visibly see the HMI and all the lights. Then I think I want a bit of L-shaped wood with all the terminals at the bottom so I can wire out of it. So that's what I'm going for. So say it was here. I want the HMI there, the PLC there, some trunking in, and all my terminals down the bottom. And I'll leave enough space for this to go on if you're going to use that. That's sort of the way I'm going for it. It's like that lot. And that's how I do I just fucking put things going go. Yeah, right. That's what we're going to do. That's my plan. That's what I'm going to do my rig. How are you going to do yours? Next, we're going to throw some power into them and see if we get to communicate and use the software. So what I've decided on finally is, all my rigs are going to be modular like this one. This one's an STC 1000 temperature controller on the back. It's just got relays and stuff like that. And I like the fact that I can incorporate this with my test rig. So I'm going to make all my test rigs, my PLCs and my HMIs, one module. 
and anything like this could be another module with terminals on the back that way i can get any of these future modules make whether it's a, a shaft encoder a temperature sensor whatever and incorporate it so rather than having one big test rig i'm gonna have the little plates that is my decision i'm gonna go for it in part four